Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels and today we're going to talk about Judaism and feminism. One of the biggest changes in the last century is women's rights. Women today are seen as equal in society in terms of education, voting, jobs, and everything else. Now, Judaism doesn't live in closed doors, right? God intended this world to be dynamic and to be developing. When such big changes happen, we, Judaism responds, Jewish law responds, and this is something that we've been doing throughout all the generations. Sometimes we're a bit cautious about the change, sometimes we embrace the change, and sometimes it actually helps us uncover some deeper truths that always existed in our Torah. Our Torah is dynamic and every new generation has new ideas, new challenges to face. Today we're going to talk about Judaism and the feminism movement. How does the Torah and Judaism view women? Also, we're going to get a little bit into practicality. How does feminism look in the Orthodox Jewish communities and at the end I'll give a little bit of my personal opinions and feelings being an Orthodox Jew. Does Judaism support feminism? So in general, yes, there's a lot of good that came from the feminist movement and a lot of positive effects on our societies as well, but there are also some wrong concepts and ideals and effects that took place that Judaism is against, and I'll get to these points in just a moment. We can divide feminism into liberal feminism and radical feminism, or a lot of people talk about waves of feminism. The first wave of feminism fought to allow women to have equal rights, voting rights, uh, social rights, economic rights, not to be discriminated against, and these are all super positive. And the more radical waves talk about society and all its institutions being patriarchal and we have to fight these institutions. And the third wave even talks about completely disregarding any gender differences and things like that. Two issues that we have with these um, concepts. The first one is the no difference, that men and women are no difference, gender is fluid, you decide what gender you are. Uh, no. God decides what gender you are. He created you and there's a reason why you were created in this specific gender. The world is divided into males and females and part of who you are in this world, you were born to these parents, you were born to this nation, you were born into this gender. I understand that there's a lot of things that make up our identity and things that influence perhaps more than gender, but to completely disregard it is to go against um, nature and to go against how God created you. So of course every male has female traits and every uh, female also has male traits, but it's all a matter of proportions. Our differences between male and female are also what enable us to have children together to bring a different perspective to our families and also help us complete each other spiritually. Second issue with feminism is our relation to men. Either they are part of the patriarchal society, it's sort of like a battle between the sexes, or like some feminism said, like, we don't even need each other. Very famous feminist saying is, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. We don't agree to this, right? We think that men and women need each other. We need each other to complete each other. Needing each other and creating families together is one of the most important Jewish values. My rabbi back in high school said, let's use the word instead of feminism, let's call it familism. And this is because family in Jewish tradition is a core value and it's the foundation of our nation and our society. We see that in the world, in the modern world, for various reasons, family is becoming a little bit less of an emphasis for people. We see in Europe, the fertility rate in 2022 was 1.49 births, which is declining. And we want to make sure that family continues to be a very important value in society. Of course, we want happy marriages with mutual respect and affection. So what does Judaism say about women? When we look at the sources, even at the Bible, where we can learn so much about the female characters there, 
these women did live in a certain historical context. Also, some of the Jewish law or sayings were also um, within the society which when they were living where women um, were really different, right? They had a completely different family structure and we have to take this into account. Also, there's a lot of different sayings about women and men and if you just take out one of the sources and you don't really give its full context or look at the general picture and we could get a distorted picture. So if we choose to look kind of before historical context even came into play, then we could look at the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible. So what's fascinating here is that there's basically like two different stories, right? We have the first chapter, we have um, two, a male and a female created together equally at the same time. And in the second chapter, we have a story where man was created and then it was not good that he was alone and God took a piece out of man and formed a female. Kabbalah explains what happened here and it's a term called nesira. What this means is basically sawing. Initially, we were created together, back to back, kind of like Siamese twins, and then we were taken apart and then we kind of come back together while looking at each other and that's the journey of every couple. Initially we were together and then each went on our separate journey in the world and then when we reunite it is by choice facing each other. So this is the Sod Hanasira, the secret of the sewing and it's a Kabbalistic uh, expression. Now let's talk about feminism in the Jewish society in practicality. This had a major impact on society in so many ways. For example, women uh, in the early 19th century, they started a Jewish girls school for ultra-orthodox girls, also known as Beis Yaakov. And until that point, girls never got a formal Jewish education. They were more educated at home. So girls go to school, women uh, work. Torah learning for women has been such a revolution. Changes are still being made till today to improve women's rights in religious society. This could be in the religious courts and in marriage and there's incredible organizations help women in all of these situations and to improve their rights. And the second and very important place where feminism enters into um, Jewish life is the family unit. Fundamentally in our Ketuba, which is our Jewish marriage contract that we sign when getting married, in the contract man is responsible for being the breadwinner of the family and women have the responsibility of caring for the home. Once we have the contract and the fundamental principle set up, Every couple um, does what suits them and divides the load work between them as they see fit. Even in earlier generations, this contract was able to be flexible and a woman could have said, I don't want to be supported, but I also don't want to do the household work. So it was always a flexible, but especially today, a lot of rabbinical opinions that I read talk about the fact that today, um, you know, each partner gives into the family what they can. And of course, if women are taking part of the breadwinning job, then men should also take an active role in household chores and family. What's really interesting is that in some ultra-Orthodox communities, women are actually the breadwinners of the family and some of the men choose to be full-time Torah learners. Basically, the woman is then giving up her rights to have her husband be the breadwinner and she's taking this on herself for the higher value of Torah learning. What do I personally think and feel? So I am super appreciative to feminism and all the rights that it's giving me and all the choices that I've been able to make. There are a few places where I feel like it got it goes too far. Like today women have to juggle maybe too much. We have to be working outside the house and inside the house. I have a few friends that would much rather prefer to just be at home with their children and raise them and not work outside the home, but they're forced to do this either financially or also someone who was at home told me that she feels like people judge her, like she's only raising her family. And that kind of makes me sad because like what's more important than raising your family and being a homemaker? 
So that upsets me when you know women don't really have the choice. Also, a lot of times people say, oh, there aren't a lot of women in high rank positions and things like that. And they, they try to think, what's the reason? And okay, because women know that this time is valuable to be with our families. Maybe we don't want to sacrifice these years that we have with our children and we don't want all these demanding um, jobs. Personal story with my first kid, at first breastfeeding really upset me because I felt like my partner can't help me and only I have to feed. And then with my second and third kid, it was like my perspective completely changed and it was like, this is amazing. Only I can breastfeed. This is my role. This is my job. And I felt so proud. So to me, feminism means having choices and each couple coming to the right um, proportions of household work and breadwinning in the family. Now that we do have equal rights, I feel like I have the privilege to really appreciate my uh, female roles and to embrace them. So many more topics to discuss here. And if you have any questions, please write in the comments below. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.